from the Neighboring Food Co-ops Association. So Urban. Thanks, Michael. Um, first, I just want to thank CDS for this opportunity. Um, it, it's great to have a chance to speak with you all. The Neighboring Food Co-op Association really grew out of this desire to no longer work in isolation. And, and now we're a secondary cooperative of almost 30 food co-ops and startups across our region. Um, it's both uh, an honor and a challenge for me to follow Tom Webb as a graduate of his program. I can't speak highly enough of that program. And you'll probably hear me say a few things similar uh, to his presentation. Um, I think Michael uh, just mentioned something about talking about co-ops till it comes out your ears. That's, that's me, if you would like to have that happen to you. And what I'm going to try to do is put out five ideas in five minutes here. I think that might get it coming out your ears and uh, see if I can pull this off. So we're going to move fast. And uh, Mark told me I couldn't talk fast. So we're going to skim each of these slides, and they'll be available in the library for people who want to dig in later. And I just encourage people to jot down what stands out for our discussions. I wanted to start with just my personal experience, because to me, uh, I, I was fortunate enough to begin in a co-op, which was enough of a rev revelation for me, um, but very quickly recognized what co-ops can do together. Um, what brought me to that co-op was buying products from uh, marginalized farmers in the developing world who were using the co-op model to make their lives better. Very quickly, I noticed that the people who made that possible were food co-ops. And a lot of the food co-ops in this room gave that co-op its start and, it ena and enabled us to do what we do. There were financial co-ops who would lend us and the farmers money before anyone else would. So we started thinking about what other products and services can we buy from co-ops? What else do we have in common uh, with the co-ops that we work with? And how can we think about that as a broader cooperative economy? And that's where I sort of made the shift to, to this idea of our cooperatives. You know, and and uh, no disrespect to anybody in this room, but I consider your co-op to be my co-op, whether I'm a member of it or not. That's how I view this wider movement and what we're trying to build together. So what do co-ops bring to the table in this task? Thankfully, the UN has answered th that question for us. We might have some great ideas, but it's pretty exciting to see an outside organization tell us what they think we bring to the table. And a lot of that is innovation and resilience, particularly in this economy. The other thing that I think is important to recognize is that the UN isn't just talking about a single sector. They're not talking about food co-ops. They're not talking about farmer co-ops. They're talking about all co-ops in their various forms. And I think that gives us a starting point to think about how we can maximize our impact um, for the world around us. So how do you start seeing this landscape? I think for the neighboring food co-op association, it started with just thinking about our community of cooperatives. This idea that we've got something in the range of 90,000 shared members, over 200 million in revenue, buying local products, uh, you know, over 33 million in, in purchases for local products, that's a lot for us to work with. But then, as part of the celebrations of the year of co-ops, we decided to put together a little map to show people graphically what other co-ops are around us. This is food co-ops, fishery co-ops, credit unions, artisan co-ops. And somewhere buried under there is our region. You can't see the, li the lines in the states, but that's New England. And most people, when they go to this uh, uh, page, it's like a revelation for, it, for them. You're, you're kidding me. There's all of this around us to work with. By the numbers, it's pretty impressive, too. Um, I think this is mostly New England and New York in this room. It's almost 9,000 co-ops all across the economy in this region. Um, if just a small portion of those co-ops started to think similarly and try to figure out how to work together, we could obviously make a huge impact in this region. If you pull back a little further, you know, 29,000 co-ops in the US, one in three Americans, this idea that there are a billion co-op members worldwide, and significantly, that's more than own direct stock in corporations, right? Despite the fact that if you go to business school, you're going to learn about this other model, we've actually got more members. So how can we use that knowledge to start growing our cooperative economy? Thankfully, this idea of collaboration across sectors, within sectors, is built into our principles. But it's not always obvious how to put that into action. 
But I think it's important to recognize, and, and the numbers we're seeing around the, the global impact, the national impact, the regional impact, it can only make us stronger to think about the members and revenue and numbers that we have as a group and not just our own sectors. Going from our individual co-op to working within our sector to this wider cooperative economy uh, makes us an answer to the economic challenge in people's lives, to their social challenges. It becomes much more relevant when you can say you can be a member of our co-op and you can also make that uh, real in the rest of your life through these other cooperatives. So what does it look like when co-ops work together deliberately and strategically? Well, you get things like the Mondragon cooperatives in Spain. You get things like northern Italy. You know, in Italy, there's more co-ops per capita than anywhere else in the world. But you go to northern Italy, and two-thirds of the people are members of co-ops. Co-ops are contributing a third of the GDP in this region. And this is all because they work together deliberately, both within sectors and across sectors, to maximize business opportunities. And in a sense, uh, uh, what's exciting to me, actually, is um, this is an old idea. This isn't some new idea I hatched up, or Tom Webb hatched up, or other cooperative leaders, or, or, or Charles Gould, Gould hatched up. This is something that we've known. Um, and if you look back to the earliest cooperators, their idea was to create this broader cooperative movement that could benefit people across the economy. The Rochdale pioneers, their, their vi vision was not to start a grocery store and stop there, right? They were going to accumulate capital, leverage that buying power to start new co-ops, and spread across the entire economy. That was their end. And in a sense, they succeeded. The Rochdale Co-op never ceased operation. Through a series of mergers, it became part of what's now known as the cooperative group, with nearly six million members operating all across the economy, offering their members services in all aspects of their lives. And now, in the face of the year of co-ops, they've come up with this ambitious plan to grow to 20 million members by 2020. So where do we start? From, from my perspective in this region, you start just by trying to see the landscape. What are the other co-ops out there? How can you open a dialogue with them? How can you start small? You know, this is an ad we did with co-ops in uh, Western Massachusetts, credit unions, worker co-ops, food co-ops, just to make our presence known. How can you show the co-op products on your shelf in the food co-op? When you start thinking about new products, and this is a picture of the, the pilot um, for frozen vegetables we did um, with the neighboring food co-op association sourced from a produce co-op called Deep Root Organic Co-op. How can you make that a deliberate process? And for food co-ops that use uh, policy governance, are there some easy ways to embed this idea into your policies and, and the way you operate? And this was actually a, a sample end that Don Kreese put together when he and I did a presentation at CCMA on basically building cooperation among cooperatives into our work together <laughs> and bring us back to this concept of our co-ops. And if we can begin to take those steps, I think we're going to lay the groundwork for, for the ICA's vision of this cooperative decade. We'll begin putting the planks in place so that we can step out there confidently and say, we are the business model that you're looking for in all aspects of your life. Thank you.